Oh, Kermit, can I borrow this for my round things party? Bean, where did you get that? On the roof. But don't worry, I disconnected all the wires. Uh, Bean, that's our satellite dish. <laughs> did I do something wrong? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Bean, I tell you what. <gasps> Why don't I just take Mr. Satellite Dish back up to the roof, and you can, uh, well, you, you can help Digit start the show. Oh, okay. Digit? Yes, Kermit. Where's Kermit? Well, he said I could help you start the show. He's up on the roof. The roof? Mm -hmm. It's not safe up there. I'd better tell him to come down. Oh. Kermit, come in. Kermit, come in. Ah! Oh. He came in. <laughs> oh. me. Let's watch the opening. And welcome to our show. Tonight we travel to a strange land where everyone and everything seems to be magic. The world of Lighthouse Island. Have a cider, Zeb Norman. Thank you. Uh, I am thirsty. I just rode my bicycle all the way from Charlene. But first, Muppet Television. Kermit, what's the show about? Well, there's a lot of fish in it, so I guess it's going to be a kind of a friends and relations show for me. Great. Give my best to your folks. Will do, Jim. It's going to be a wonderful show with our great guest star, Ted Danson. Hey, Lindbergh, have you fixed that hole in the roof yet? Just about you, Skipper. All good. Because I want everything chip shaped for our guest star. Ooh, ooh. Whoa! Anybody got an umbrella? The Jim Henson Hour will return after these messages. Get you out of there. I found the busted pipe and they turned off the water. Oh, good. Oh, hi there. We've got a terrific show lined up for you with a heap of pirates, some singing fish, and our very special guest star, Mr. Ted Danson. Oh, thank you, Kermit. Is there any way I can help? Well, gee, thanks, Ted, but the show usually just kind of takes care of itself. Of oh, it's wonderful how calm and collected you are. What's that hole doing down there? Oh, oh well, the floor just kind of gave way there, but... And you're uh, not even worried. Boy, I tell you, this frog, unflappable. Carry uh, on. Uh, oh, well, thanks. Hey, Digit, cue the Balikian folk dance troupe. Check. Hey, guys, hey, uh, hey, there's a, there's a, watch out for the... There's, there's a hole in here. You should... Uh, don't, don't, don't go through the... Uh, listen to... The... Is this a problem? Oh, uh, no. No, no problem. Hey, Digit, cancel the folk dance and cue the fish. <laughs> See? Boy, didn't even miss a beat. Totally unflappable. Splish splash, I was taking a bath. Long about Saturday night. Oh! Rubber dub, just relaxing in the tub. Thinking everything was all right. Well, he stepped out of the tub, put his feet on the floor. I wrapped a towel around me and I opened up the door and then... Ooh. Splish splash, he forgot about his bath. Well, how was I to know there was a party going on? There was a splishing and a splash, yeah. The whole gang dancing on my living room rug. Yeah! Flip top, we was doing the pop. All the teens had them dancing fun. It was a lollipop with a Peggy Sue. Good golly, Miss Molly was even there too. Well, a splish splash, he forgot about his back. I went and put my dancing shoes on. Yeah! I was rolling and a strolling. I think that went swimmingly. Thanks, Chief. Well, I, well, actually, I was talking about the fish number, but uh, 
Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry about the hole in the floor, folks. Uh, but uh, that dance number looked like it was going to be great. Uh, except for the ending, of course. How deep is that hole, anyway? Will you people please keep it down? Uh, what? Some of us are trying to blast tunnels, you know. Hey, you got people dancing up here or something? Well, this looks pretty bad. Actually, it's just a minor problem. Oh, minor oh, problem? Oh, I like it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Digit, cue Merlin, would you? Oh, Merlin, he's funny. And now it's time for the medieval medic with the mystical mind, Merlin the Magician, M.D. Whom is it to seek the wizard's help this day? A guy with a fish through his head. Ta-da! Sit down, sit down. I've heard of catching fish, but this is ridiculous. Now, how'd this happen? Well, this started out as a wart on my stomach. You stay out of this. Ooh. You! How'd this get here? Answer the question. Well, what was the question? Just like I thought. It went in one ear and out the other. Ta-da! You'll have to speak up. I've got a herring in my ear. Then what you need is a herring aid. Ta-da! <laughs> Why? Oh, just for the halibut. Ta-da! Thank you. Wait, I plead insanity. No sane fish would ever agree to appear in this sketch. Are you sure? Yes, it's beyond all reasonable trout. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh. Pegasus, the mythical winged horse of story and song, send him in. Hey, what about me? I'm sorry, son, but I'm making a rule never to put the carp before the horse. Ta-da! What the heck is that? Ta-da! Can I help you? Yes, get me to the hospital. Ah! Hospital. That's pretty bad. I like it. Mr. Kermit? I uh, am. Yeah. Ted Danson's ready on monitor five. Oh, good. What's he got planned for us, Vicky? Well, Mr. Danson and I spoke about it. Mm -hmm. I said perhaps a dramatic illustration of man's journey into himself. Uh, what did he say? He said he'd rather do a comedy sketch. Oh, good. Cue Ted Danson. But, well, I'm... Were we lucky or what, Pumpkin? Just yesterday saying, let's take a cruise. And now, here we are, lucky us on the only cruise ship that had any room. We're so lucky. Ahoy there, you miserable landlubbers. Welcome to the Jolly Roger flagship of the pirate cruise line. So wash the bilge out of your ears and look lively. Arrgh! I'm sorry, who are you? I'm your host. My name be Scurvy. Scurvy? Been called that ever since I caught the dread plague and spent a fortnight spitting up buckets of black blood. Oh, well, yes, that's a lovely story, but I think there's been some sort of mistake. Is there anybody else we could speak to? Arrgh! Pig Leg, get your briny bones out here. Hi, I'm Pig Leg. I'll be your waiter tonight. Our specials are salt pork and maggoty biscuits. Arrgh! I don't think so. Not that it isn't tempting. Pumpkin? I'll just have club soda. Yes, two club sodas, please. Club sodas? With a twist of lime. Oh, you son of a sea cow. I'll give you club sodas. Oh, good. Here. Ah, what's this? Well, you want anything on the pirate cruise? You've got to fight for it. Arg, arg. <laughs> oh, I hate these places where you have to fight your way to the bar. <laughs> Still. All right, you swill swinging sea scum. <laughs> Club sodas, please. Oh, well, uh, uh, certainly, sir. Uh, will that be, uh, um, uh, uh, cash or, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, charge. charge to your, uh, uh, cabin. Cabin, sir. Charge, thank you. Oh, well, uh, just sign here. I'm 15% of three doubloons. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you, sir. Ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Save you. Are you the 
one they call pig leg? Odd. Well, then, this is for you. Timber! Oh. Here we go, pumpkin. Here's your club soda. Uh, uh, where's the twist of lime? Oh, no. I forgot it. Oh, never mind. I'll get it. Arg! That's my pumpkin. Boy, that Ted Danson really gets into the spirit of things, doesn't he? Okay, Chief, the floor is fixed. All good. Yeah, I found this piece of wood exactly the right size. Mm -hmm. All right, you mangy wharf rats. Give us back our prank. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he wants those cutlasses. There are power lines all over this place. <laughs> Oops. This is our mistake. It's all right. <laughs> Hey, Kermit, everything okay? Uh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, fine. Oh, well, great lighting. Mm. Real dramatic. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Ow. Okay. Let's see, that was the end of the first half. So what comes next? The beginning of the second half. That makes sense. Coming soon to a theater more or less near you, depending on where you live. Below the sea, beneath the waves, a new force has arrived. A force so powerful, so dynamic, no fish can stand in its way. Now, from Neptune Pictures, comes the aquatic explosion of fury that is Mario Malaschini's Karate Squid 3. <laughs> Karate Squid 3, now playing at a theater near someone who lives near a theater somewhere. Oh, oh, oh Kermit, the underwater set has sprung a leak. Uh, quick, find something to plug it up with. Oh, uh, ah, ah, ah. Huh? There, I've stopped the leak, Kermit. Uh, why do I keep thinking of Niagara Falls? You got water on the brain. Hey, let's go to the extremes great underwater number. Shark. Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> hey, Lindbergh, is everything fixed? Absolutely. I connected the water to the sinks mm -hmm. and the electricity to the power outlets. Oh, fine. Thank you. You know, you're lucky to have a professional like me around. Mm -hmm. Just think what would happen if I'd mixed them up. Mmm, yeah. Oh, pardon me, Kermit. I was going to dry my hair, but there seems to be something wrong with this hair dryer. Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> Bridget! Oh. Right, well, just just cue the documentary. Ah! Will, you, will you stop that? Turn it off! And now, 
called the undersea world of Jacques Roach. We have been aboard our ship, the Boogaloo, for many months. All is well, but I think the crew is feeling a little... Hey, Captain Jacques, when are we gonna surface? Yeah, we've been down here for months. Are you saying that your soul has not been stirred by the silent mystery of the dip? The dip? What mystery of the dip? It's just cream cheese and instant onion soup. Yeah. Yeah. And has yeah. your heart not rejoiced and soared each and every night as we sing the theme song of our sheep? The sheep have a theme song? I didn't even know we were in this sketch. Ah, Boogaloo, the places you've been to. That's it. We're out of here. We're jumping ship. <gasps> jump ship? You cannot jump ship. I should say not. Duh. Oh, oh. Get the lures. It is the giant lobster. All right, quick, yeah, quick, 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 quick
and he used the water for many of his needs. But still, still, he was not completely content. I wish I had the wheel and the telescope and dental floss. Oh, yes. This is going to change the world. And so Ted went into a prolonged period of inventing and building, which proved fruitful. But of course, there were side effects. And still, his thirst for innovation went on. I just invented electricity, freeze-dried coffee, and penicillin. I'm also doing some wonderful experiments with petroleum derivatives. Ted kept doing that for a long, long time. And in truth, there were a lot of other Ted's, all doing the same thing. And eventually, all life in the water died. The sea stopped producing oxygen, the earth became uninhabitable, and that was the end. Hello, excuse, hello, excuse me. That was the end? Yeah. Well, what kind of an ending is that? Well, I thought it was the one you wanted. No, don't be silly. I, I, I love the ocean. I came from the ocean. You should know that better than anybody. I mean, that's kind of like my home. Huh? What's this? Did I invent this? It's for you. Hello? Hi, Ted. We thought you'd like a call from home. Guys, it's the fish. Hey, guys, how are you? Oh, we're terrible. Believe the narrator for crying out loud. Guys, come on level with me. It's not as bad as he says, right? Face it, Ted. It's worse. We're dying down here. I know, I know, I know. I mean, you read about it all the time. I mean, it's the oil producers and the chemical companies, and the, the government won't do anything about it. I mean, guys, I really feel helpless. You? Helpless? You're the one who's been dumping poison into the ocean. Who told you that? The narrator. He was speaking metaphorically. I was not. All right, all right. Mistake. You're right, I'm sorry. Um, I shouldn't have dumped the stuff in the ocean. I'll stop. Well, what about the stuff that's already down here? All right. Um, geez. Uh, well, then I'll try to clean it up, okay? Promise? Well, sure. Of course. I promise. He promises. Listen, thanks a lot. We all really appreciate this. And the sea creatures swam away happy again. Because Ted, their distant relation, had promised. And under the sea, no one ever breaks a promise to a relative. So maybe they all lived after all. Maybe they even lived happily ever after. It's all up to Ted. Good night, everybody. And now let me tell you about a place called Lighthouse Island.
ladies, gentlemen. My name's Zeb Norman. I just stopped by to ask for some directions. A newcomer. Oh, what a treat. Newcomers get their future read. Here, take a card. The fish. <laughs> Never mind. So, uh, is this place really called the, the No Name Tavern? Uh uh, not called anything. Doesn't have a name. But the sign says it's called the No Name. The name isn't No Name. If No Name was a name, then there'd be a name. But there's No Name. Not even a No Name. Here. Have a cider, Zeb Norman. Thank you. I, I am thirsty. I, I just rode my bicycle all the way from Trolleen. Long way to ride on a warm day. Uh, I'm looking for Clara Buford's shop. Clara Buford? No one goes there. Clara's nothing but trouble. I used to live near her. My inns would never lay. I I'm looking for a wedding present. I'm getting married. It's a very important gift. Wheelers. You want wheelers for a wedding present? Hmm. Other side of the coal. What about Clara Buford's? She's across from Wheeler's, but stay away. I spoke mean to her once, and my back was out for half a year. Yeah, well, thank you for the cider and the fish. Both fish. Buford's is over there. Pardon? <laughs> Care to have your name etched on a seashell? Tourists all love it. Who's the lucky girl? How did you know? Well, you're certainly not looking at silver necklaces for yourself. I'm Clara Buford. There's a better selection inside. Come this way. Hmm? Now then, you still haven't told me who the lucky girl is. Oh, well, you wouldn't know her, ma'am. She lives in Gandhi. Uh, where to be married? I used to live in Gandhi. I know everyone there. Really? Well, well, then maybe you can tell me something about her. We've never met. Never met your bride-to-be? We write letters. See, it's this kind of correspondence club we both joined. And I promise to write every few days, telling you about my life and my dreams. And I promise to write back telling tales of the sea. I hope you love the wildness of the sea. So it went on like that for about a year. And then one day, I asked her to marry me. She said yes. Oh, isn't that just the sweetest story? She arrives tomorrow on the weekly ferry. I'm looking for a present, something in silver. She loves silver. She says it reminds her of the sea just before a storm. I've lots of pretty silver. <laughs> a necklace would be nice. Or a locket? I don't know. It doesn't seem right. Just a locket. <gasps> or a pin. A pin? Uh, it has to be really special. Aren't you going to show me her picture? How did you know I had a picture of her? A young man in love. 
Rosalie. Yes, her name is Rosalie. Then you do know her. Yeah, yes, I should say. I, well, I did say I knew folks in Gandhi. Oh, you must tell me about her. Yes, well, uh, she is a very special girl. Uh, but you know, jewelry. Oh, that is not all the right kind of present for a girl like Rosalie. Uh, it isn't? Oh, no, 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 no. A girl like that doesn't need any added adornment. But if not jewelry, then, then what? Shoes. Shoes would be perfect. Shoes? Dancing slippers. She put them on, you'd sweep her up and dance off into the moonlit night. Oh, so romantic. But I wouldn't even know what size. Now, these would do very nicely. Or I do have some powder blue ones somewhere. No. Here, these are the ones. Silver slippers. They're perfect. Not those. Silver is Rosalie's color. They're too big. They're the same size as those. They're family heirlooms. I'll pay double. No. Triple. No. I'll do anything to have these shoes. Anything. I do have a little task for which I require help. What is it? I have an errand on Hog Island. But I can never figure out how to make the motors and the boats work. You can take me there. Is it far? No, it's just out in the bay. We could leave in an hour. Yeah, I, I suppose I could take you there. A handshake, surprise. Remember, no more than half throttle. She overheats. If they make it to Hog Island, they'll be cold and belly up. Can we go a little faster, please? The man said no more than half throttle. Whose errand is this? Yours or mine? Is that Hog Island? Yes. Strange looking place. It's not the place I'm worried about. What's happened? The motor's overheating. Oh, terrific. I thought you knew all about boats. So, stop the motor, quick! Uh, mm. oh. It still won't do it. Uh, uh, it's working. Turn that down. What was that thing out there? Well, I, 
I can't be sure, but I, I think it was Fred. A sea monster named Fred? Oh, I'd better explain, because that's why we've come. You see there? There's this jewel, a pearl that has the power of transformation. If I had that pearl, I could close my eyes and wish myself into anything that walks or flies or swims and open my eyes to discover it so. A transformation, are you sure? I had that pearl once. I held it here in my hand. But before I could use it, even once, it was stolen, gone from its hiding place. <laughs> and old Fred was gone too. So Fred turned himself into a sea monster and lives out in the bay. Fred, the old fool. He turns himself into lots of things and he lives right here on Hog Island. And that's why we've come, to get the pearl back. What? At night, running around on a tree-covered island with a guy who could be a tiger or a snake or who knows? Handshakes off, Clara, no deal. Oh, I see. There are some things you won't do to get the, the silver slippers for your bride. Oh, well, we'll just melt them down in a fire. A fire? Yeah. It's too bad, though. I so like the image, you and Rosalie dancing off into the moonlight, the silver slippers on her feet flashing like captive stars. It's too bad. Oh, well, we'll just crush them to bits. No, wait. Don't harm the slippers. I'll help. There's a good lad. So where do we find this pearl? There's an old hermit hut ahead. Fred might live there. You mean you don't even know? No one comes to Hog Island, not since Fred came. His Fred's a real joy. Oh, I don't know what's come over him. He used to be a cranky sort, but nice enough. But now, when he turns into a beast, he eats sheep. When he goes swimming, he sinks boats. And when he flies, oh my, when he flies. <laughs> when he's angry. Yeah, so I've noticed. Come on. Let's just stay. Come on. Yeah, Fred lives here all right. We must find the pearl. Hell with the pearl. No, the pearl belongs to whoever touches it last. Find the pearl and that... That thing out there will vanish.
Give it back, it's mine. Ah! Clara, I might have known you'd come looking for my pearl. It isn't yours, it's mine. You stole it from me. Dream another one, Clara. Oh, jeez, my hand's broke. Does this pearl really have the power of transformation? You're asking him that? God almighty, I did my sea monster, I did my flying beast, I did my tentacle. How much do you need? Now give it back, it's mine. Oh, you stole it from my daddy's stuff after he died. I said I could have it. Well, I didn't know then how you could turn into stuff with it, did I? Now that pearl is mine. It's mine. Ow! At the moment, it's mine. The slippers are mine. A handshake's a promise. Yeah. A handshake is a promise. Now we have what we came for. I don't. Rosalie. <sighs> Oh, what are you going to do with that pearl, Clara? You'll know soon enough, Fred. Oh. You need to look after that hand. I suppose we should give you a ride. I wouldn't ride with you to the back door of hell. You tell Carl Sims to come and get me. Carl hates your guts. Well, that's a damn lie. Rosalie is here. Uh, Goodbye, Clara Buford. I'm coming along. I would miss seeing the lovers meet. <laughs> your bride. A very special girl, Mr. Norm. Well, aren't you going to give her the present you worked so hard to get? Then you got the slippers. I did. What? How'd you know about the slippers? I asked Seb to fetch them from your shop. <laughs> he thought it was an odd request for a mermaid. You knew that? Of course. I remember when you lived in Gandy, Claire Buford. The mermaids knew about your silver slippers. These slippers are legendary. Oh, they're family heirlooms. Why would a mermaid care about my slippers? <laughs> oh, I don't. I only care about the power they may harbor. Our slippers have power. Oh, we hope so. At least the legend says they do. These slippers are the only chance that Zeb and I have for happiness. It's a more desperate chance than you realize. To get them, I had to give her a pearl of transformation. Yes, I have the pearl. It's useful for dealing with pranksters like you. With this pearl, I can close my eyes and wish myself into the worst of your nightmares. Joy, Clara. 
as deep as the sea. We've seen a lot of sea creatures tonight. Here's one, a puppet of a whale, or a whale of a puppet, depending on how you look at it. That's all for now. We'll see you next week.